and brightest stars to our state, but some of its most notable legends as the league celebrates its 75th anniversary. And we're excited because in just a few moments, you're gonna hear from Governor Mike DeWine, who has joined us this morning. And Governor DeWine's gonna provide us uh, with some brief remarks on yet another huge sporting event coming to Ohio. Then you're gonna hear from David Gilbert, President and CEO of Destination Cleveland and the Greater Cleveland Sports Commission. Glenn Komorowski, the CEO of Cleveland Cavaliers and Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Both David and Len are gonna fill you in on what to expect during the All-Star Weekend, including some of the current and former NBA legends that are heading to the land. Later on, you're gonna hear from Lieutenant Governor John Husted, who will be joining us to talk about what this event means for the state of Ohio. And then finally, we're gonna open it up to all of you for a Q&A session so that we can address any specific questions that you have about the All-Star Weekend and what this means for our state. So before we can talk anymore, let's tip some things off here with a video, courtesy of our friends at Destination Cleveland to get us ready for a huge event. I take the whole city down with this. I take the whole city down with this. Being an all-star is not just a title. It's a mentality. It's how much you practice when no one's watching. It's how you step up when a whole city is counting on you. It's about seizing your moment. That's greatness. That's Cleveland. We're the home of legends, champions, and stars that shine all night. No matter the outcome, we're never defeated. NBA All-Star 2022 in Cleveland. Don't just see great, be great. Welcome to Cleveland's Court. Well, that definitely gets me uh, very excited and looking forward to the All-Star Weekend. And right now I'm excited to be able to welcome our governor, Governor Mike DeWine. Governor, what a great time uh, to be an Ohioan. Well, it is a great time to be an Ohioan. First of all, I apologize not having my Cavs tie on. Um, I'm in Columbus today and the Cavs tie back is back in Cedarville. Uh, but, you know, one of my great memories is the 1997 uh, All-Star Game uh, had couple of my dear friends there and several of my children uh, and they still talk about it. And I still talk about it. A great, great experience. We're looking forward to the weekend, uh, this weekend after next when uh, we'll be, we'll be in Cleveland. And uh, this time I'll have not only some of my children, but some of my grandchildren. So it's a, uh, it's a great thing. You know, what makes Ohio just such a, a great place to live uh, is our, our quality of life. And one of the things that impacts our quality of life uh, is professional sports. And to be able to host all-star games, uh, like we, we've done, I've seen them in Cincinnati, I've seen them in Cleveland as far as baseball, I've seen, of course, basketball in, in, in Cleveland. So, you know, this is a really a premier event. Uh, it's a world event. And we're just so delighted to have it back uh, in, in Ohio again. So it's, uh, it does go to the quality of life. You know, we talk about what makes Ohio great. Uh, we talk about the theater. Uh, we, we talk about the you know, low cost of living. We talk about the, our great state parks uh, and on and on and things to do. And, you know, professional sports. We have great professional sports in Ohio within an easy drive of about everybody in the state. And it's, uh, it's, very, it's very, very exciting. So we're happy to be hosting the all-star game again, and uh, it's going to be a big, a big, uh, a big week, really. So, director, I'm going to ship it back to you and uh, for the other speakers. Well, thank you so much, Governor. You know, it certainly is quite a time uh, to be in Ohio between the Intel announcement uh, a couple of weeks ago, and certainly for the next two weeks, our state's going to really be uh, on the world stage. We've got the Bengals playing in the Super Bowl. We've got the All-Star Game coming up here uh, in the next uh, couple of weekends. Um, it's a great time. 
uh, to be uh, here uh, in Ohio. You know, um, we are now uh, going to turn things over uh, to David Gilbert, uh, who is the president and CEO of Destination Cleveland and the Greater uh, Cleveland Sports Commission. David's played a huge uh, role in helping Cleveland host so many uh, successful events over the years. And David, we've got yet another big one coming up. We do, Director. Thanks so much. Um, uh, and, and as the governor said, it's, it's uh, going to be such an exciting week for our city, for our state. Um, NBA All-Star Game is really the, one of the most largest and most impactful events that any city can host. It's going to be right here in Cleveland. Um, and, uh, and we spent a lot of time and effort getting ready and doing a lot of the little things to make it even bigger and better and more impactful. It's going to be a huge event on our community, an estimated $100 million plus in new direct spending from outside the community here. Worldwide media, the event will be seen in over 200 countries from around the world, highlighting our incredible city. Um, and while Len's gonna talk about all the events going on around the All-Star Game, we've also done a lot of things to, to make it bigger, to make it better, to make it more impactful and leave a bigger legacy. Um, big free events like the Power of Sports Summit, a three-day uh, free concert, with um, all kinds of celebrity speakers celebrating the power of sport for change and equity and inclusion. Real Black Friday, a, a great event uh, held in Cleveland being used as part of this platform of the NBA All-Star Game. Over a hundred black owned businesses, performances, fashion shows, the Xbox Family Fun Day at Great Lakes Science Center and so many more. And if, if anyone goes to clecourt.com, they can get a schedule of all the events. Many are free. You'll hear from Len so many other events that are still available at, at reasonable cost and still a great reason to think of coming up to Cleveland uh, for this weekend. You know, this has been a huge community effort over a number of years with so many organizations playing a role in helping to plan and to make this great. Uh, and that includes the state of Ohio. Um, I, 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 can't, I can't say enough about the state's efforts in helping Cleveland and other cities around the state to help attract these major events that are hard to get, major competitions to get these. And, uh, and the state has played a huge role and, and director to you and, and all of your staff, thank you so much. And uh, 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 hope, you, uh, hope you all take in as, as, as much of this great week ahead as you can. Thank you. You're welcome. It's our pleasure uh, to, to play a, a role as part of the team in bringing uh, this fantastic event uh, to highlight uh, what is uh, what is great, obviously, uh, about Cleveland uh, and the region. Um, right now, uh, I am happy uh, to introduce uh, Len Komorowski, who's the Chief Executive Officer of the Cleveland uh, Cavaliers and Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Len's been uh, with the Cavs since 2003 and has seen this organization reach the highest of highs, uh, with an NBA title uh, back in 2016. And now they've got a young team that is certainly on the rise and are getting set uh, to play host uh, to the NBA All-Star Game. Len, what an exciting time uh, for the Cavaliers. Thank you, Director. An incredibly exciting time and great to be here with the governor, Lieutenant Governor David, uh, just and, and everyone else here. It's, it's uh, as you said, the Director, it's an incredibly exciting time. We have a team that you know, has surpassed expectations, but they're not done yet. So we have uh, quite a bit of runway, hopefully ahead here. Uh, but uh, also when we talk about all the partners who are on the line here right now, we also have an incredible partner in the NBA who they've really looked at this with decidedly a Cleveland and Ohio focus with every aspect of what's going on. So you're going to see that will interwoven with everything that's taking place uh, as is the case and working with David and the sports commission who really help activate in the community at the highest levels ever. Uh, we think the bar will be set for all future All-Star weekends that will make its way uh, beyond. If you look at Salt Lake City coming up after us. Uh, the, other, the other note as well is, uh, you know, David alluded to this. So you look at, um, uh, at, at the, the, the two most widely played team sports in the world are soccer and basketball. And uh, in soccer, you have all these super leagues, such as the Premier League and La Liga and La Bundesliga and others. There's only one super league in basketball worldwide, and that's the NBA. In fact, 25% of our players are international. When you think of Luka Doncic and others, uh, you know, Jetty Osman and, and many others of that nature. Uh, so with that, and in fact, the G League 
which is our Cleveland Charge, is the second best basketball league in the world. So this truly is a worldwide stage. 215 countries and territories will, will receive this in terms of from a broadcast perspective. And about 2 billion people will consume all-star content when you think about including digital media. So this truly is a window to the world uh, relative to Ohio and to Cleveland. And we're proud to be able to play a part of that role as well in, in, this, uh, in, in this whole aspect. And as the go governor said, we were fortunate enough to have the 50th uh, anniversary of the NBA well, All-Star Weekend in 1997. And fortuitously, we have the 75th. In fact, we have an early ask in for the 100th down the road here as it comes down the line. So uh, we're very fortunate to have that. And then as part of that, the NBA will be honoring the 75 uh, top players in NBA history. And so many of them will be present at Rock and Mortgage Fieldhouse on, you'll see them on Sunday as part of NBA activity. So a lot going on, and this is truly a celebration, you know, not only for the residents throughout the state of Ohio, but throughout our region uh, to come to the land. And just speaking to uh, the, some of the events that people can participate in, on, uh, on starting on Friday, February 18th, we have NBA crossover, which will start on the 18th through February 20th, Sunday the 20th, going from 12 to 8 p.m. Uh, at public auditorium. And it's basically an immersive fan experience that showcases the intersection of basketball, technology, culture, fashion, art, music, and entertainment. Uh, and, and tickets are on sale now, starting at, 10, at, at $30. Uh, the NBA Ice Buckets Court pop-up at Tower City. This is a free activity and it's open right now. Fans have the opportunity to prove they have ice in their veins by competing in a buzzer beating basketball game for the chance to win NBA prizes. And, and while fans are there as well uh, over that weekend, the All-Star weekend uh, at Tower City, they can also check out the Real Black Friday's Black Expo featuring over 125 local Black-owned businesses and vendors. So, and with that Ice Buckets uh, uh, court pop-up uh, challenge, uh, we actually had the mayor, Mayor Bibb, participate in a bit of that uh, after uh, last week with a little activity we had at Tower City. Uh, also on Friday, the 18th, 7 o'clock at the Wolstein Center. Uh, and that's one of the beauties of Cleveland. All of our, our venues are downtown and walkable. Uh, we have the All-Star Celebrity Game at seven o'clock featuring some of the biggest stars from film, television, music, and sports all in one court. And we'll see Cavs legends like uh, Booby Gibson and Anderson Berjau playing in this game as well, not to mention others like MGK or Machine Gun Kelly. And then that Friday night as well, we have the Clorox Rising Stars Friday, February 18th at nine o'clock at Rocket Mortgage Field House. This, field, uh, this really highlights some of the league's best young talent. And we are fortunate enough to have uh, Cavs' Evan Mobley, who as a rookie right now is one of the favorites for Rookie of the Year, and Isaac Okoro. They've earned their place among the rising stars for, this, for the league and will compete on the same team coached by NBA legend Rick Barry. And then on Saturday, we have NBA All-Star Practice presented by AT&T. That's Saturday, February 19th at 11 a.m. at the Wolstein Center. It'll give you a unique behind the scenes event with fans, opportunity to see more than 20 of the NBA's biggest stars practice and be interviewed by the media from around the world. And then first time ever, the NBA HBCU Classic presented by AT&T. That's Saturday, February 19th at two o'clock at the Wolstein Center. And the Classic will be presented in a new exciting event this year. First time ever at an All-Star Weekend. And we're proud of making its Cleveland debut featuring Morgan State University and Howard University. And then Saturday night, the uh, State Farm All-Star Saturday night. Uh, this is uh, February 19th from 8 to 10 at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. And it has the Taco Bell Skills Challenge, the Mountain Dew three-point contest, and the ATD in Slam Dunk Contest. One note in the Skills Challenge, there'll be three teams participating, and the Cavs will be heavily represented with one of those teams, with Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen leading the charge. And then on Sunday, we have the NBA G League Next Gem Game, which will be at 2 o'clock at the Wolstein Center, and the G League Ignite versus the Cleveland Charge, showcasing some of the top emerging young basketball talent in the world. And then the 71st NBA All-Star Game, celebrating the NBA's 75th anniversary at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse from 8 to 11 p.m. We'll be proud, proud to see Darius Garland representing the Cavs All-Stars on the court that night uh, for, for the game. And as far as um, uh, information on all the events, you can download the NBA Events app on Apple app or Google Play Store. 
and it serves as the ultimate on the ground resource for all things All-Star Weekend, uh, most up-to-date information. Tickets can be purchased through the NBA Events app or at nbaevents.com. So you know, uh, tickets are, are not available for All-Star Saturday night or All-Star game based on the nature of the international community coming together uh, at, you know, relative to those tickets. But for all the other events I, I spoke about, they are available. And then just relative to All-Star health and safety protocols, health and safety for everyone connected to All-Star in Cleveland is our top priority. And given the amount of people coming internationally and nationally before participating in any ticketed event, all guests age five and up will need to show proof of one uh, proof one time of being fully vaccinated against COVID-19 or of having a negative COVID-19 test. The test could either be a negative PCR test 48 hours before their first event or a negative antigen test the day of their first event. So thank you, Director. Back to you. Thank you so much, Len. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm now pleased to introduce uh, Ohio's Lieutenant Governor John Husted. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, thank you so much uh, for being here. Although a huge football fan, I know basketball is one of your favorites as well. Our state is bringing in yet another marquee sporting event, which means so much not only for Northeast Ohio, but for uh, the state uh, as a whole. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you, Director. I appreciate that very much. I'll have a little fun trivia here. There's somebody on this call that I believe holds the record for rebounds in women's basketball at the University of Finley. So uh, for those of you who don't know the answer to that trivia question, it's director Lydia Mahalik. So she was a, an excellent college basketball player. And, and I know we love sporting events when they come to Ohio. And they're, as far as an all-star celebration, the NBA all-star game features the best athletes in the world. You, I mean, the best athletes in the world are going to be in Cleveland at this all-star game. Uh, and it's not just the game itself, which is, which is amazing, but the skills challenges, I'm confident that uh, Darius Garland, Evan Mobley and uh, Jarrett Allen, Len will, will, will bring a victory home for the Cavs and the skills challenge. Uh, just incredible talent. And by the way, you don't need my endorsement, Len, but the Karis Levert, uh, Pickering, Central, Pickering Central High School acquisition from, from the Pacers to bring them the Cavs is a great, great deal. Uh, I'm excited about that. I think that the Cavs are, are going to go uh, to the NBA playoffs and make a run. And wouldn't it be awesome to have the Bengals win the Super Bowl and the Cavaliers win the NBA championship in the, in the same sports season? So I'm, I'm dreaming here, but this is... Uh, this is, this is an awesome thing. And, and I'm excited about the NBA All-Star Game uh, for, for lots of reasons. And uh, it, most of all, gives us an opportunity to highlight Cleveland, uh, that it is an all-star city. It's a place that can do big things. Uh, it it uh, really is going to be a, a nice way to, to once again demonstrate uh, all the amazing things that happen in Cleveland. And, uh, and I'll, I'll just say this, that... Uh, uh, it'll, it'll be an exciting weekend. I hope, I hope that the people of the Cleveland area appreciate the opportunity that they have to, to be involved in these various events. Uh, it is truly, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. If you ever had a chance to play an actual game with a guy who plays in the NBA, you realize that your, your skills are nothing compared to what these guys can do. They're just they're just amazing. And the fact that this is all going to be on display in our own backyard here is, is, is uh, fantastic. And, and I'm excited uh, for what the Cavs are doing, what Cleveland is doing and what the all-star weekend will be uh, in Cleveland and Ohio. And I hope uh, everybody makes the most of this fantastic opportunity and enjoys the, enjoys the weekend. Thank you uh, very much, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, we're now going to, transition into the question and answer part of this event where you, uh, the media can direct questions uh, to David, uh, to Len, to the Lieutenant Governor, uh, or myself. Uh, where we ask that you please use the uh, raise hand function by clicking the reactions button at the bottom of the screen. If you have uh, a question, we will have John Griffith call on you when it's your turn. Uh, so at this point, John, uh, you're up. All right. Thank you, Director. And 
if you don't mind uh, introducing which media outlet you're with and then directing your question um, to one of the panelists, that would be great. Um, and then also David Len, uh, Lieutenant Governor and Director, remember to unmute yourselves when you're answering the question. Um, first off, we have, um, and I'm, I'm getting a, an order here. So I believe we have Tira Braddock from WOIO. Um, so Tira, you can unmute yourself and uh, direct your question. Yeah, I do have a question. When it comes to the bars and things like that, I know our mayor decided not, and administration decided not to have the bars open to 4 a.m. Any of the panelists can answer. How do you think that's going to affect the nightlife for All-Star Weekend? Um, I can, thanks for the question. I can, I can certainly take a stab at this. And <clears throat> I'll qualify by saying I certainly don't speak for uh, uh, the mayor and his team, although we've had a lot of conversations, they've been a fantastic partner in all this. Um, everything we know, um, there were somewhere uh, between 70 and 80 different bars and restaurants that um, uh, uh, applied for the license to stay open until 4 a.m. And um, while I don't have the exact specifics, uh, um, I, I, I know it was the mayor and his team's decision that overall from a safety and security standpoint, nothing more than that, um, that, that it, they, they, they decided not to um, move forward on, on a, a recommending the issuance of those. I will say um, it, it, there's a big balance here. Um, you know, our, this event is, is bringing tens of thousands of people to town and they, gen they will generate tens and uh, tens of millions of dollars in direct spending. And m the vast majority of that will happen whether bars close at 2.30 or they close at four. Um, and I think that, that it, this was a balance of maximizing every penny that could be spent with public safety. And again, I can't speak to the exact reasons, but, but do know in the planning of things like this, um, there are those types of decisions that are just a balance of a lot of uh, a lot of different issues and um, and and in many ways, probably no right answer. All right. Thank you, David. Uh, next, we'll go to Joe Engels um, from Ohio Public Radio. Um, Joe, please uh, direct your question. OK, well, uh, thank you for doing this. And I want to ask about Ohio weather. Uh, you know, we can't predict from one minute to the next in this state what the weather is going to be. What are the plans if we get hit with a lot of snow, a lot of ice, a lot of bad weather? What are the contingency plans that are in place for the, the folks who attend and are getting around, especially on foot, if you've got huge snow drifts and they can't really walk easily? I guess I could take another stab at this one, Joe. Thanks for the question. Um, as we've seen in the last couple of weeks, um, something we've had a chance to think about and prepare for. Um, you know, I guess I would start by first saying, we, you know, we up here in Northeast Ohio know how to deal with snow, um, and uh, it's you know we're very resilient. Um, and we also know that our job here is to create the best experience for all of these visitors. And uh, uh, we've been working very closely with the city on, on all kinds of contingency plans. We've been working with uh, uh, the Cavaliers and a number of other organizations to help uh, uh, with supplementing contractors, especially uh, on sidewalks, should it be needed. Uh, because, you know, we have a great downtown, a great walkable downtown, um, and we're used to doing it in, uh, in that cold weather uh, if needed. And, and we're, gonna do, we're gonna do everything we can to make sure that that experience uh, um, uh, as a pedestrian during, uh, during that time, no matter what the weather is, is still gonna allow everyone to do everything that they plan to do while they're here in Cleveland. And David, just maybe to add to that, because very well stated on that whole front, uh, you, you never look at, look at anything like a, the major snowstorm as something that you would welcome, but if anything, it, it helps serve as a reminder of what the potential of those type of impacts can be. And so there's been, uh, as David noted, a lot of dialogue and, and extensive engagement with uh, the city and, and David's team and downtown Cleveland Alliance and many other community partners as to how we can ensure to have uh, to address in the 
in the event that something would happen like that to try to be as uh, effective as possible to create the experience we all want to deliver. Great, thanks for the question, Joe. Uh, moving on to Dan DeRuz from uh, back to WOIO and then we'll get Danny Eldridge after that. Uh, thanks for the availability. Um, I wanna get back to the uh, showing proof of vaccination. Uh, I think of Djokovic at the Australian Open. I think of all the VIPs that you're going to have in. How do you honestly think you're going to be able to check every VIP that wants to come in the back door uh, to verify that they have been vaccinated uh, or um, can prove a, a negative test? That seems just like a very, very lofty. Uh, are you doing it at the door as as the regular general public comes in, or are you doing it at the back door when the VIPs are coming in? How are you going to make that possible? Well, first of all, thank you. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll address that. Uh, that um, great question. And uh, I, I would just tell you, we've been doing it for a number of events already at the field house. So if you think of the rock hall induction ceremonies, you think about Harry Styles in concert, Michael Buble, those had effectively very similar protocols that were in place. We already have uh, similar uh, pro protocols right now as it relates to NBA events as it, it pertains to our event level. So when you think of anybody who has access to that level, such as players, VIPs, people who have VIP row seats, you know, uh, those type of levels. So we already uh, work to execute. We work with a third party clear. So if you think about your experience in going to an airport uh, and uh, having, you know, clear and having that information preloaded, or otherwise we'll be uh, prepared as we have with other events that have successfully executed in a relatively uh, streamlined fashion for multiple events here at the field house and, uh, and working with the NBA to deploy that as well, you know, relative to the, uh, the other, other venues too. So um, it's been a, 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 a was viewed and working collectively with the, the city, you know, with the league and with, with David's team and others, given the amount of people coming from, other locales, because uh, we have a this, this is truly a an event that has people coming from all over the world. Uh, that this was a responsible measure to protect the citizens of Northeast Ohio. All right, thanks for the question. Uh, moving on to Danny Eldridge from Hanna News Service. Hello, uh, thank you for taking the time to take our questions. Um, so my question is for the state leaders probably. Um, so what kind of state funding um, or resources are being provided for the All-Star game, like Highway Patrol, et cetera? Or can you just talk about that, please? Well, I, I can speak to um, the state funding relative to what we have available for the major sporting event grant. Um, I think maybe uh, David can talk about, uh, you know, specifics around uh, state resources uh, for the, the actual event itself. Um, the, the Department of Development awarded about a $1.8 million major sporting event grant uh, to the Greater Cleveland Sports Commission. This is pretty standard for us when events of this magnitude uh, happen. The legislature has given us uh, this, this, these resources in the past to help cover costs that are incurred uh, by the commission in putting on uh, the NBA uh, All-Star Game. Those funds are awarded uh, to the commission on a reimbursement basis uh, once uh, those costs uh, are incurred and paid. Um, this is pretty standard. Uh, we've worked uh, with the Sports Commission in Cleveland in the past uh, and with Destination Cleveland in the past, uh, but those uh, to the extent um, uh, that, that uh, I'm aware, uh, those are the, the funds uh, that we have affiliated uh, with this event. David, do you want to take uh, part of that? Sure. What I would add um, is that um, two, two important points. One, uh, the types of, of funding that the state provides for this um, is it uh, uh, leverages funds so that it, only when the state makes money, uh, uh, some of those funds, just a portion goes back to help offset the expenses. Um, and and uh, um, above and beyond, uh, both our city, our county, and, um, uh, and our private and philanthropic community, uh, we've raised several million dollars uh, uh, above and beyond to help cover the, uh, uh, the different community obligations related to hosting the event. Great. Thanks for the question. 
Also have uh, Emma Henderson. Uh, Emma, if you could uh, announce your uh, media outlet and then direct your question, please. Hi, yes, uh, I'm with WKYC Channel 3 in Cleveland. Um, and so uh, my question's along a similar vein uh, as the very first question, but basically we had eight places approved for those extended hours and 70 denied. The 70 are local businesses, the eight are hotel chains for that extension to 4 p.m. Um, with that being said, what are the opportunities for local businesses beyond just the increased amount of people that are here? Because I know these restaurants that were planning on having these extended hours, they've had to return deposits to people. They've had people cancel events already with them. Uh, and there's definitely a concern about, you know, whether this is going to be the economic uh, boon that they were hoping for, especially coming out of COVID with all of the uh, amount of time they've had to deal with restrictions and other issues. Well, David, take that one. Um, sure. And again, what I have to qualify is say I can't speak for the mayor on this and, and, and the specifics of the decision. But I will say I, I will say this. There's a couple of important points. There will be tens of thousands of visitors that will be eating breakfast, lunch, dinner and going out before and after games at all of those places, whether it's till 2.30 or 4, they're going to be there. I think second, it's estimated between four and 500 private events um, above and beyond what the NBA uh, um, uh, has in terms of official events that have been booked at, at venues all over the community. Um, and again, those, the, the, nearly all of those to our understanding uh, were all booked before places of business even had the opportunity about four weeks ago to fill out their applications. So, so um, we, we really don't believe that uh, uh, if you look at the big picture, there's going to be an enormous difference between the amount of spending, whether bars and restaurants are able to stay up until 2.30 versus 4 on, on, those, on those nights. Um, again, I, I, uh, the only other thing I'd say is, I, you know, I can't speak to why that one group of hotel, the hotels that were approved were only ones that applied. And I believe, again, not speaking for the mayor, the logic was there are going to be a lot of people, workers and many others, not going to parties at those places, but going back um, after they're working and so on, just want to make sure that they have places where they could eat and so on. Um, but, but at the end of the day, we believe that the overall economic impact um, is, is not going to be affected greatly by whether or not the bars and restaurants are able to stay open that extra hour and a half. And, and David, maybe just to add to that, I think, you know, you're, you're, you're correct. And you're, as you're stating there, relative to those hotels, many people who are helping stage all these events and activities, many cases not getting back until well after midnight. Uh, that's their opportunity to actually have uh, a little something to eat and, and wind down for the evening as far as that, to be able to address that. The other note, just to add to that relative to, and this has been an intentional focus not only amongst ourselves, but also with the NBA and then working with the Sports Commission. But the NBA has collaborated with more than 200 small businesses as part of the NBA All-Star Rewards Program and encouraging fans to patronize locally owned restaurants and retail businesses for the chance to win tickets to attend and to attend All-Star events. In addition, the NBA has identified dozens of women, minority and LGBTQ owned businesses through its Supplier Diversity Program that will help bring NBA All-Star to life as vendors. So there's been incredible focus about how to have as much of that economic impact uh, really deployed in utilizing our, our small business community here in Northeast Ohio. And that's been a terrific partnership amongst uh, all the part parties here working uh, on this call today. Thanks, David and Len. Uh, no other questions uh, as of right now. Does anybody have, if you wanna unmute yourself and uh, let us know if you have a question, otherwise we'll give it back to the director. We'll give you about 10 seconds. Any other questions? I'm just curious if there's a list that we can access of some of these uh, local businesses uh, that have been receiving these things. Yeah, I believe you go to the NBA. Uh, uh, if you go to the... Um, NBA uh, rewards app, you'll uh, all-star rewards program. Uh, you'll be able to see those or, and, and actually engage with them. Okay, perfect. Thank you. We do have another question. So uh, we have Mark Bona. I hope I pronounced that right from uh, Cleveland.com. 
Yeah, this is an easy one for anyone. Uh, I don't think this has been released, but any road closures announced in the city over All-Star Weekend? Um, I, I think th there, the city will have anything out. Um, it, it, there, I think there may be a couple and they're pretty minimal. Um, they, they're, they're more for some loading and unloading, nothing significant, freeway entrances, things like that, but the city will be putting that out in the next week. All right. And I see, uh, Joe, do you have a follow-up question or I know your hands up from maybe your first question. Yeah, I just, I just left my hand up. I'm sorry about that. Okay. No, Not used no to taking it down here. <laughs> no, that's okay. Well, thanks for being here. Any other questions from anybody? All right, well, we'll give it back to Director Mihalik uh, to close this out here. Well, thanks, John. And uh, thank you all uh, for joining us. And thanks to our partners for being a part of a, a successful uh, announcement here. You know, Ohio continues to be home to a lot of successful uh, events. We're very excited about All-Star Weekend. Of course, Cleveland does a great job at hosting events uh, of this type. Of course, we had the 2021 uh, NFL Draft uh, not too long ago. We just had the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, which was a total hit. Uh, and we're very excited uh, for, for this one coming up in a couple of weekends. Uh, you know, what we want you to know is that all media uh, that was a part uh, of this call and others are going to be emailed a Dropbox link uh, with video and photo assets to use in your coverage. The link's also going uh, to include a recording of this briefing. Uh, be sure to visit uh, clecourt.com for all things NBA All-Star Weekend 2022. And of course, our favorite site, ohio.org for additional ideas for travel in Ohio. Uh, we want you all to have a great day. Stay safe, everyone.